Inside Pages is brought to you by Appointed Time Printing Limited. Today is the 1st of May 2021. Hello, good morning and welcome to another Saturday. We bring you Inside Pages from Metro TV. My name is Francisca Kakwa Forsen. Today we'll be discussing a popular legal case known as Re Akoto and Seven Others. We'll try and assess the case and look at why it is relevant in today's times. You can follow this conversation on Facebook via Metro News. On Twitter, it's at Metro TVGH. You can also send your WhatsApp messages to the number 54 6939 which will be displaying on your screen soon. Please do not call the number, but send a message. Remember, Inside Pages is brought to you by Appointed Time Printing. We'll be right back. Um, let me introduce my guests to you now. Joining me for this conversation is um, Benjamin Antiedu, lawyer, legal researcher, and author. Good morning to you, and thanks for joining us. You are in white. What's the occasion? Oh, great. <laughs> Okay, is it possible to bring your mic forward a bit? Yes. Okay, let me also introduce um, the ever brilliant educationist, among oh, others, Ni <laughs> Ama <laughs> Adini. Good morning and good to see you. It's been a while. Good morning, yes. Thank you. What have you been up to? Uh, writing, reading. And you're not sharing with me what you're I writing. will, please. I will. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> Okay, so I want us to, I want to start this conversation, but just to, uh, for the benefit of our audience who um, may not have followed or haven't heard about the Ria Koto case, um, you're a lawyer and you've also studied law, you have a legal background, but I, I really want the conversation uh, to be a non-legal conversation for everybody uh, to, to be able to appreciate it. So um, I'll ask my producer to project the slides. I'll just do a small uh, recap or a summary of Riyakoto, and then we'll get into why this case is important. Okay, so this is a case about um, a bar for a Seyakoto and seven others. And these seven others are ordinary Ghanaians, including lorry a lorry driver and what have you. So a bar for a Seyakoto himself is a senior linguist uh, to the, or was a senior linguist to the Asante Hene. And, um, they were arrested and detained under the Preventive Detention Act in 1959. Their offense was that they were acting or they acted in a manner prejudicial to the security of the state. This they appealed at the High Court and they demanded uh, writs of habeas corpus, but their application was refused. They then went to the Supreme Court and they were represented by J.B. Dankwa, Joseph Boache Dankwa. And one of the grounds uh, for their appeal was that the PDA, which was the authority for their detention, was in excess of the powers conferred on, parli conferred on parliament uh, by the constitution. And this is the 69 constitution, article 13, one, uh, where the president made a declaration, a solemn declaration of fundamental principles. Now the Supreme Court unanimously dismissed the appeal on all the grounds. And this case was severely criticized um, as not giving room to um, the human, the fundamental human rights of Ghanaians. I'll start with you, um, Benjamin. So put this case into perspective for us. Why are we celebrating or why is Ria Koto relevant students, um, or let me say a friend, Bashiru, uh, for winning the King's University College uh, Law uh, Association elections. Uh, he was uh, ably supported by uh, Goodna Papia, uh, Dr. Nyakute, Nana, Nana Prempe, and the rest. So okay. congratulations to them, and we say that beyond the celebration, there's a work to do, so we wish them well. So yes, Ria Koto is one of the seminal decisions of our courts. And if you look at 
the constitution, our 1992 constitution, you will see a picture of the development that has taken place uh, that may be traced to just that one case, re Akutu. So every student of law uh, is confronted with this constitutional law case. It is so, so important because we're talking about constitutional development and fundamental human rights and freedoms, particularly fair trial and due process of law. Mm -hmm. Incarcerating people is a serious human rights issue. So if you incarcerate people with that due process of law, which was the case under, um, under consideration in Riyakutu, the PDA was passed by parliament then. I was just having a very uh, friendly encounter with a, a gentleman on social media. And I was saying that Riyakutu is not just a case, but a symptom of a very bad law, you see. So this is reawakening or drawing our attention that every law that we pass in this country must be carefully considered. Because if you look at the antecedents of even the PDA, it wasn't only Ria Kutu and others that suffered. Even the, the government, uh, members of the governing uh, uh, body then, they all got to suffer uh, uh, about PDA. So the PDA was a law that says that the governor general who became the president upon the coming into force of the 1960 constitution. And this was Kwame Nkrumah. Exactly. That if your conduct, if the, uh, the president or the governor general is satisfied that your conduct is prejudicial to the security of the state, that was sufficient that this law allowed him to detain you without trial for five years. So that um, from the history, we know that um, Akoto and the seven others were imprisoned from 59 to what, 66 when the coup happened. Exactly. And who determined what was in breach of well, the security of the state? That's what I'm saying, that the governor general or the, the president then, could, when he is satisfied, so absolute discretion, absolute discretion. Lord Acton has said that, Power corrupts and absolute power, power corrupts absolutely. I read, I was reading that from your book. <laughs> okay, so this is so fundamental that in the time power is conferred, there must, there shouldn't be any absolute power. Power must be limited because our human dispensation is to abuse. Okay, so what we're saying is that we should, it's not to say that it was so bad for the government, parliament at the time to be concerned about the security of the state. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about due process of law. That is why our constitution will come there, how it has reflected and developed our law. Okay. But it is a very important human rights issue, it's core to our democratic journey because when we traded off our power, our sovereignty to be led by leaders, the concession we had was to keep our rights. So that right must be protected. You say that, before I go to Niamh, you say that it was law. The PDA yeah. was passed by parliament. Yeah. So that, um, really, would it be, would the criticism of executive abuse at the time be fair, given that parliament indeed passed that law and the judiciary was merely interpreting the law that had been passed. Yes, uh, but you look at the, the scheme of government or governance. You have the three arms of government, and we I think you appreciate the, the, the principle of separation of powers. Mm -hmm. We have to, all the organs, one has to check on the other. So if parliament has fought it, the only hope is the judiciary. It was for the judiciary not to be so mechanical and say that even the use of the word should throughout the fundamental principle was sufficient to say that then there must be a distinction from other rights. Okay, so what I'm saying is that for any law to take up, take uh, away the freedom of people, particularly your freedom of liberty movement, then you should be proven guilty. That is why our constitution has firmly established that no matter the circumstance of your arrest or the commission of, uh, alleged commission of offense, you are presumed innocent until you are proven guilty or you plead guilty. Okay, mm -hmm. going beyond that, look at even the emergency powers and the kind of arrangement that has been made that even in emergency situations, when you are arrested, okay, 
there are certain preservations for you to exercise your rights and for you to be given immediate right to be heard. Okay. Okay, let me bring in uh, Ni Ama Adi on this. Ni, so what are your thoughts on why should we even talk about Ria Koto anyway? Good. Um, Ria Koto is good. And first of all, you say that uh, the Ashanti kingdom is always proud to celebrate their own <laughs> because um, I, have, I had an opportunity to have an uh, a conversation with uh, Atokwashi of blessed memory, I don't think he's buried yet, who also told me he suffered the PDA in Jamestown prison somewhere. But I mean, this is a kingdom that celebrates its own and want to make it so pronounced. And therefore, they made it exclusively as if the PDA was suffered by just the people from the Ashanti region, which it's okay, it's okay to make somebody pronounce and put something to it. And also, if you look at when the, the lecture was instituted, which is in 2006, mm -hmm. that was during President Kufour's time. So again, there is a heavy political inter in interception there, I mean, to, to project a certain group of people and to project a certain political agenda. And we all know that going forward, the, uh, uh, the Akoto, Bafo, and Co. became part of the founding fathers of the MPP as we see it. So purely, it's, it's a political push. It's a big because political of agenda. Because the NLM that they formed, which later sort of became, um, um, what do you call it? M M M UP. UP, yes. yes. UP, and then now MPP. MPP. Yeah, so that it's, that it's a huge... I mean, tribal issue there, there's a huge political agenda there, which has gone on and on. Even in, in our elections over the period, Vito Usu versus Liman, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can see the antecedents of a certain posture which has largely influenced our politics and even our reading of the law. I mean, every lecture, yes, Riyakoto, very popular, we all read it, but I mean, it depends on who is teaching and what a person decides to do. And let me give you a little example of the hook. I mean, you, you study theology, and there is a seeming attempt to talk about Aquapim tree and Aquapim translation of the Bible without talking about Abokobi, where the Bible was first translated by Zimama and going to Ghana. You see, when you jump something into the other thing, then it kind of spoils the whole beauty of the thing. Okay, but having said that, it is a genuine case that happened. Mm -hmm. The case was tried. And let's set the fundamental straight that you cannot punish for an offense which does not exist in law and which the law has not prescribed what punishment was to be given to it. So if you look at the seven points on which counsel for the, the appeal, accused, argued, uh, J.B. Dankwa, you would see where it talks about parliament passing the law, where the, the governor general acted in ultra virus, okay. I mean, beyond the jurisdiction, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll come into those details. So first of all, yes, as bad as a law is, which we all know that there are bad laws, and we all know that there are bad rulings, which we all read and say, mm, how did this happen? <laughs> how did they get to this? Which we all say, at least the fundamental is that the PDA of 1958 was passed. So it became a law. And once it's a law, it means that we must all be guided by what the tenet of the law is. OK? Yeah, that's it for the introduction. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Just a small part of matters of importance. OK. Uh, senior referred to the, 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 what, the evolution of the lectures and all that. Mm -hmm. But I'm tempted to believe that this is for the Ghana School of Law. Yeah. OK? Ria Koto happened under our uh, original constitution, in uh, Republican constitution. So it was selected on that basis. It had no political connotation. Ria Koto is always analyzed within the scope of development in America, Marbury and Madison. Mm -hmm. So that has been one of our original points to even look at the development of constitutional law. Okay. So it's a fundamental case 
and I believe strongly that it has nothing to do with politics, to do with The scientists. debate has begun already, but hold your horses, <laughs> gentlemen. I want us to first digest the issues in the case, and especially the connection with the Constitution, and then we'll look at um, the controversies, if I may say, surrounding it. So there have been commentaries such as uh, the lectures have been an attempt to rewrite history, a sort of some attack on, on, on uh, the CPP and Nkrumah tradition, all those interesting angles we'll look at. But um, Benjamin, I'll come back to you, and I, I want us to look at the case proper. Okay, so let's look at this um, security of the state that the um, that Mr. Koto and the seven others, we understand we're acting in a manner prejudicial to explain that to us. Uh, thank you very much. And that was one of the fundamental grounds that J.B. Damqua, the celebrated uh, lawyer, uh, uh, you know, argued strongly. Mm -hmm. That even when we say security of the state, what, what does it mean? We all know when there's, there's no peace or order in society, when there's rancor, it is clear. But in the perception or somebody's feeling of, uh, you, you know, that there's no security or there's a, a threat to our security. Mm -hmm. that, that scope is difficult, it's indeterminate. Okay, so that, that alone, that alone was a huge point on which, and Senior alluded to the fact that our constitution requires that, I mean the current one, and that may be a reflection of that, that there should be a definition, a definition of the offense. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you have said that I have engaged in activity prejudicial, or inimical to the security of the state, then you should tell me how my actions cause, cause what? So it is, it is indeterminate. And then the law in such a case should have defined that so that it brings certainty. So that when you are leading your life, you know what to do and what not to do. And that's the, the, the a key principle in rule of law. Okay. I want to come to the, the uh, commentary about the, the verdict. The, the Supreme Court threw out, um, uh, threw out the appeal. I don't know if you want to touch on the basis they did that before I read the commentary. Yes. yes. Uh, you see, you mentioned that seven grounds that were argued. Yes. The fundamental one was that it, the PDA itself contravened uh, Article 13 1 of the 1960 mm -hmm. Constitution. Okay. And that is where the courts, the courts have learned a lot. And if you read uh, subsequent cases uh, to for an attorney general, you know, you, you have a critical, a very punchy uh, guideline that the constitution is, is a living organism capable of growth and development. Mm -hmm. So when you are construing the constitution, you should adopt a more liberal, broad approach. You don't apply mechanical uh, approach to interpretation that the court you looked at the whole of the fundamental principles under uh, Article 13 one and said that oh throughout the fundamental principles just an intervention so that the Article 13 one uh, was referring to this is the uh, the 1960 Constitution 60. I think I said 69 at some point exactly. Pardon me, 60. 60. this was referring to the express provision of human rights mm, yes a collection of things that the, the those were the principles that the president espoused mm -hmm. on his assumption to office. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when he was assuming uh, the office, he would make these promises to the people. And some would perceive that as some kind of human rights And so there were provisions. some human rights provisions in there, some relating to observing the fundamental human rights of people, non-discrimination on the basis of race, color, you know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. they were part of it apart from the governance aspect. So, okay. there were, so the court was saying that, the court acknowledged a form that there were a bundle of rights there, okay. but they were not the kind that were remediable at law, that they were kind that only imposes moral obligation. So for you to even admit that there's some kind of obligation here. So the moral obligation, how do we uh, uh, you know, account hold our leaders accountable to moral Because obligation. the court essentially said they're not, um, they cannot be enforced exactly. by saying they are not justiciable. Exactly, okay. but it, you know, it imposes a moral obligation. A moral so what obligation. is a moral obligation mm -hmm. and at what point do we uh, enforce that that is done? And who enforces that exactly moral the obligation? Point. So that was our admission, that you saw that there was something wrong, but 
you know, you just use wording, wording, and that is where going forward. You see, our um, interpretation out of 2009 mm -hmm. has further said that the purposive um, approach to interpretation, where you look at the purpose of the legislation, what okay. every provision has a purpose, every law has a purpose. Let's discover the purpose and look at the test and look at the meaning that will reflect the purpose. Okay, so you don't look at just one provision and say that the word is should, should, uh -huh. and not shall. So you've brought us to that should and shall yes. argument. Exactly. And for you, you know, even ordinary English, what is the difference between a should and a shall? As a, uh, you know, in Ghana, we have adopted as a, draft, a drafting style to use shall and may, you know, in terms of when you're imposing a duty and then you, uh, you know, conferring power. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you use should or must, those words are imperative. Okay, so that is why... So, so that they should have been construed to mean the same thing. Exactly. If you make this promise to the people the very day you assume power, then if not, is, if uh, you know, it's not supposed to be enforced at law, then what, what is the significance? Something that you say on assumption of power. I see. Now, let's look at the connection. Before I, I, I open it up and bring it near my, near my this, let's look at the connection or the impact on the 1992 Constitution. We're looking at a case as far back as late 50s, 1960. We're in 2020, uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this case as against the 1992 Constitution. Okay, so that's a good one. Uh, but we should even trace the development from the 1969 constitution, okay. 1979 constitution. Uh, you saw the, the, the dramatic change of events to the extent that now we have a whole chapter five spelling out all the rights. I mean, the substantive headings of the rights that we must enjoy. Those have been clearly stated. The fundamental and then, human rights. Human rights and freedoms, yeah. okay? And I've said that fair trial is the pillar <laughs> of it. Pillar of it to the extent that even in emergency situations where Ghana may be at war, this uh, may be outbreak of health, uh, y you know, issues like COVID or whatever, you are arrested. Okay. There's a time limit within which you should have access to the courts. So that is how far. And then also remember, you know, um, aspects of constitutional mm -hmm. law have said that it's not so much the case that when you have the law in the books is sufficient. Okay, but how you enforce it. And our constitution, Article 33, is clear that whenever there's infringement of your rights or there's even a threatened infringement, it has not been infringed yet, there's a threat of the infringement of your personal rights, you have access to the high court. Okay. Okay. So that is how far. So the development did not even occur only in our, uh, you know, recent, uh, uh, our current constitution, but from 69, 79, you saw the change. That's why I'm saying that. Ria Kuto is like the, the pillar of development of constitutional law, okay? So it has complete, absolute legal significance than any other. Okay. N N so let me bring you in here, and this is because you raise um, more of um, social issues, really affecting um, beyond the legal, so that if the, uh, the Supreme Court at the time admits that there's a certain moral obligation to uphold the people's human rights, yet it failed. Some have construed that to the, which you also allude to, the excessive power of the executive and influence uh, at the time, and, and so which influenced the decision of the Supreme Court. Um, looking at it today, do you think much has changed in terms of the the excessive power of the executive? Oh, there is the semblance of, of same. I mean, we can draw, we can join the, 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 the links of, of many similarities. But um, when um, Sinian spoke about um, what what, uh, what, <clears throat> what word do we use? Uh, what security implications mm -hmm. that they have on the state. I mean, like I said in my introduction, I had opportunity to have a lengthy conversation with Atokashi of blessed memory. He told me 
in that conversation that uh, they, they were arrested under the PDA before because they were perceived to be having conversations that would influence people to act against the government. Okay? So, I mean, in what we call the market square or the, the public square, where people gather at a time, you know, if you know how Christ draft cards and they gather and have conversations and they say things. Things that are said in those circles have a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. So if they were heard saying those things and they were arrested for that purpose and were put into prison under PDA, you can liken that to, I mean, today we have the plurality of the media <clears throat> where those things are heard more and goes wider and therefore they become punishable. Yes, and again, the comparison. I mean, we've seen cases where people have even complained that things that they are yet to even publish have been arrested for those things that have not even come to the public, public arena. So is it not the same things? Even here, he said they were talking, and they thought it was in their confines, where we all, what we all do. We all sit in our confines and have conversations, yeah. know that nobody will hear it. But somebody heard it, and then they were arrested. But that, again, it did not take the political aspect away. It was hugely influenced by politics. And Benjamin, Nis, Nis is raising an interesting point there because we still, as a nation, we are still grappling with um, um, this project. I've forgotten the name of the project, but where we have uh, people who are on remand forever. Uh, justice. justice for all. You have people who will be on remand for 10, 15 years. That's an abuse of their rights. Exactly the, the, the point we should be concerned with, you know, development is not uh, an event, it's a process. So when we make gains, we have to, you know, push for more. And the media, that is where we, you, you do well. You saw even the, what happened to one of your reporters, a very, uh, you, you know, strong man who, who went into places to get a feel of how, you know, people are handled and all that. Mm -hmm. That is important. So the realization, okay, that led to even the institution of the, free, um, the Justice for All program is a testimony of the development we're having. That the court has sat down and said, yes, um, that we've um, identified some gaps in prosecution, where you have police transfers, a lot of things happening, some officers who are in charge of cases probably pass on, or something happens, and the case has been pending for a long time. Mm -hmm. The court said, no, we will move to the prisons, sit there, and hear those uh, cases. If it's, 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 it's an offense that carries maybe a term that they had already served, then they will even be uh, released, okay, and all that. So that, that, that step is good, but you still have, let's say, even sometimes some uh, mishandling by national security, and some uh, you know, public institutions, those ones we have to bring them to the, uh, the, the, the limelight and talk against it, okay? Because okay. no institution is above the law. Our fundamental human rights are the only things that we can enjoy. In our poverty situations, at least our rights as human beings must be allowed to be exercised. National security must observe uh, the limitations of how long you can hold a person not beyond uh, 48 hours. That is binding on every institution. And then when you arrest somebody for questioning investigations and all that, there must be room you afford the person, the, the facilities, the opportunities to assess a lawyer, to you know, reach out to people. Okay. And then when you hold people beyond that hours, it doesn't matter the, the kind of national security, the security of the state is paramount, but the individual rights to it is. You, know, you want to make important. an intervention? Uh, yes, it's, yeah, it's rightly so, as he said. But you see, I, I maintain that insofar as uh, Ri Akuto appeared before court and they had legal representation to make their case, okay. there was fair hearing. They were heard. I mean, as I cited Atokwashi, and I'll maintain that he said they were not even heard anywhere. I mean, some, they were reported to be talking against the government, and then they were always into, into prison. Okay, so if we make exception to those who were here, those who had fair, I mean, they were represented. J.B. Danko, a fantastic lawyer, you know, before a competent court, then I don't see why we make so much out of it. 
So I, I get the I get, okay. Why not to rebar or have an exchange, but just to place it within context mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Bafua Kuto and seven others were heard. Were heard on what? They were not heard on the merits of the case, why they had been detained without trial. But I guess the, his point is that they had their day in court. The, the day in court was, was, was on just the whether they should be brought to court for the, uh, the basis of their holding up to even be ascertained. So the marriage of the case was not decided. It was just the procedure on the habeas corpus. The application, whether it was to be granted or not, that was it. It wasn't like they had their day to justify their innocence or whatever. And when we talk about uh, fair trial, due process of law is when you are given the opportunity to defend yourself. That is what we're talking about, not application, which was quite distinct from the merits of the case. Okay. Very oh, well. Um, no, 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 okay. no. Let me let me make a point. I mean, uh, 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 Ria Kuto was at the uh, appellate court. Was an appeal appeal decision. So, and, and at the appeal decision, how would at they the be brought? Court. Yes, that's it. How would they be brought to? I mean, you are represented by your your lawyers, and uh, that's it. So, so we we like I like I said, there was no way they were going to say anything. And if you have read the ruling, which I have heard, I, I, I have done. If you look at uh, uh, what the court held in, in the second point that the court mm -hmm. held, if you permit me, I will say although the I Harris want us Corpus to discuss Act. that. I want us to take a break, and okay. when we come back, we can you know you know okay. do a breakdown of the ruling. This is okay. inside pages. We've been dis we are discussing uh, the uh, the popular case Ri Akoto and seven others. This is sort of following from the uh, Bafo Akoto memorial lectures held earlier. This case is important to the, the constitutionalism of this country. Um, among many others. And uh, you can send your comments. Uh, use the hashtag Inside Pages to Metro News on Facebook at Metro TVGH on Twitter or to the WhatsApp number that will be displaying on your screen. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to Inside Pages, our conversation about the popular Ri Akoto case. Um, we want to look at the, the judgment, the ruling, uh, because that's where the conversation has delved into. Um, so we can project that slide. Uh, but me, uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the first opportunity. Okay, good. So I... Okay, first of all, like you said initially, that we should try to speak in a in a common language, so yes. that our viewers can follow the discussion. And we keep mentioning big words like habeas corpus and all that. So, I mean, what it means simply is that a person must be brought before a judge mm -hmm. or into the court, especially to secure the person's release. Okay? Unless the law, unless, unless lawful grounds are shown for their detention. And if you look at the, the second holding in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the judgment, he says that unless the Herbis Corpus Act 1816 is the statute of general application, it does not apply to this case because the act under which the appellants were detained vests plenary dis discretion in the governor general, now president, if satisfied that such an order is necessary, upon production of the order, the only question which has to be considered is its legality. If the order is lawful, the detention is lawful. And they cited Liversley versus Anderson, mm -hmm. 1962. That's it. Okay, so, and we are saying that this is a law that was enacted by parliament. Yeah. Okay? And that is what they're saying there, that if, if the order, if, no, the or, sorry, upon production of the order, the only question which has to be considered is its legality. So if, if the, the order, order is, is lawful, lawful the, the detention, detention is lawful. lawful. And this order 
has been made by what? Parliament. It's as simple as it is. For me, 2016, 15th lecture, lecture presented by the Sun, Ghana Law School, it is political glorification. There are many other cases. Others suffered PDA. They are not mentioned anywhere in the lecture. It never got anywhere. They had their trial in court. It is a law that existed. And for me, that's it. What, what about the... If there are anything that we have to do, for me as an educationist, we would rather want to look at the lessons and how that has improved our legal studies mm -hmm. and how that is even applied. Mm -hmm. And we can even draw inferences to the last uh, 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 presidential petition, the, uh, 2020, and some of the things that came up which others perceived should have gone the other way. But always, always, as we say, the law is in the bosom of the judges. <laughs> okay, I want us to look at the, the commentary going on about, which is, in part, you allude to that, uh, that this um, event about this case so uh, appears to be inward looking. Yeah. And that it's, there were other people at the time who didn't go to court. Uh, Benjamin has, has, has also you know, made an intervention that um, the only... They, they merely went to court on the, uh, the habeas corpus, which is yeah. bringing them uh, or reversing the detention, if I, can, if I can say that. But there's a commentary going on that um, history is being rewritten, or this is an attempt to rewrite history where um, certain people are being glorified as against others. So there's, there's, a, there's an implicit attack on the Nkrumah and CPP tradition what, what's your take on that? I mean, again, as I said, this whole thing was instituted in 2016. We all know the history. Of, 2006. Sorry, yeah. 2006. We all know the history up to. I mean, the role they play, how it emerged in UP, now uh, MPP, as I said. So, so yes, and the aim of the, of the, of the UP or... It's always to, to, to downplay anything that Nkuma did. Obviously, he was their main opponent, so you wouldn't do anything to glorify your opponent. And therefore, you will try to find loopholes in whatever the opponent does. And that is exactly what was perpetrated in order for, for them to gain those opportunities. I mean, and somebody have said that, look, if you, if you put uh, 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 actions on a on a scale of balance, as they try to do, we all know that the good that Nkuma did outweighs whatever negativities there are. And we all know there are negativities. But that's subjective. That's subjective, me. Not yeah. everybody will agree. I want to make an intervention, and I want to ask that, is it fair, and this is from a comment that I read, is it fair, some people say that, one particular comment I read on Facebook, the gentleman said that all his life, going through school, he was taught about how great Nkrumah is, how Nkrumah brought independence, Nkrumah saved um, Ghana, et cetera, et cetera. And so is it fair that there will be an attempt to also bring in others who may have played a role besides Nkrumah, even though some would see it as an attack, but is it, is it not fair for them to also want oh, to... Oh, it is very fair to bring in everybody who, mm -hmm. who played a role for what we, we have today as, as, as Ghana, as peaceful as we are enjoying it. It is very fair. I mean, why should anybody be taken out if the person played a role? So, so I support, I support that, that purpose. But, you know, this thing, it's a competition. You know, it's, 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 it's competition for supremacy. Mm -hmm. And for some, the more you're able to bring the other person down, the more superior you are seen. The more you are able to say that he did X, Y, Z, which is wrong, the more superior you are, you are seen. I mean, this lecture came at the heels of um, Sam Jonas' uh, 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 popular uh, 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 speech that he gave at the Rotary, mm -hmm. and some of the pronouncements that he made. I've said earlier on that the PDA, the discussions that were held, that Atokoshi, I had a conversation with, that he told me, was done in the, in, the, in the public square, in their own small, small places around Jamestown, Wato area, et cetera, places where they gather in the evenings and have political argument and, and, and discussion. Okay. But now, it is made broader. People say it in the media, so it's heard so loud. So that if now there's a perception that people do not have that freedom to speak, 
or some are carved into being silent, not to speak, then it is a semblance of what is happening. What happened there? What, what are the lessons that we've learned? Okay. Ben, let me have your, your um, input on that. Yeah. I am quite, quite surprised about the, the linkage of this to politics and all these uh, analyses. You see, this is purely a legal matter, a subject, a case that is taken as the illustration of our developmental, our constitutional developmental journey. Okay, it has nothing to do, law is neutral. Law is mm -hmm. neutral. We look at the target, what do we want to achieve? It doesn't matter where it falls. This, I would be happier, but looking at even the, the linkage of what uh, the, the senior uh, Sam Jonah has said, this is a matter that has been instituted since 2006. It has nothing to do with that planned coincidence or maybe to do it to coincide with this. You see, this is for legal studies. Ghana no, School of correct, Law. I didn't, I didn't say it, uh, the lecture was in response to him, not at all. I'm saying that there are phrases of things that he has said that you can pick from okay. the ongoing discussion. Okay, but yes. as I, 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 I said earlier, I, I maintain that Ria Kutu has nothing, nothing at all to do with projecting one political party or ethnic uh, grouping against the other. This is a case, you know, that stands for the development uh, of a constitutional law, upholding of human rights and all that. And the part that you played, I think that is where probably the uh, misconception may appear from. You know, as part of the program, at the law school, I, I was, uh, you know, a, a very active in uh, Ria Koto uh, lecture series. You had, you, the part you played was a statement by the, the son, yes, one of the an sons, an, an exactly, the talking about the father and tra tracing their history. So when you listen to that alone, you think that that was the purpose of that. It's just an aside, because it's just nice that if the person who is as the, a descendant exactly, yeah. uh, is uh, around, then you want to hear something from them. But the core point is about, about our development, rule of law in Ghana. I have benefited from the very lucid uh, uh, papers presented by Professor Dateba and all those, uh, mm -hmm. you know, great men, you know, legal luminaries, so, you know, properly so-called in our country, what they have brought to bear during this and how it has even impacted our policies and everything, you see. So we should not reduce this one to be a political, uh, <laughs> you know, issue at all. It is not, it has nothing to do with that. We have just taken this one down as a displacement to learn our constitutional law. Okay, so we should treat it as such. It has nothing to do with, I prefer, that probably is giving maybe um, rule of law lectures, and that some of these seminar cases are discussed. I, I will be fine with that. But I don't see anything wrong with just taking one case and saying that this case is so important because it was the first constitutional law case that happened in our, within our, the, the the parameters of our first constitution, okay? okay. And you can't study a constitutional, uh, a constitution, the current constitution, understand it until you look at the history, okay? So I have said okay. that our constitution okay. mirrors our past, okay. okay? So definitely a constitution is not a one-day development. It's something that, you know, reflects what we have gone through in the past and how we can live better, uh, govern ourselves better. Okay. So um, let me read some messages, and while I'm doing that, there, there will be some commentary also projected on the screen. Um, Francisca, there's something missing in this discussion of PDA Act. That, that is what necessitated, okay, that is what necessitated the enactment of PDA Act. Without addressing or talking about why this act came into being, discussing, whether, discussing it is an error. There's a <laughs> discussing whether or not it is bad will be misleading uh, the generations who didn't know why PDA Act came into being. 
Okay, so maybe maybe um, maybe you can help us with that, Benjamin. That's from Vincent in Tema. Good morning to you too. Hello, my name is Nani Diamond. Please tell me I lost his contact. Your program is quite interesting. Um, that's to you, Ni. Nani 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 uh, says she lost your contact. Good morning. Um, mm -hmm. How come Ri Akoto is the focus for discussion, especially when they were not? the only people who suffered the fate of the PDA. And that's the point that uh, me is raising, and that's why we are having this conversation. So to look at um, whether or not it's, it's inward looking or it's, you know, there are other cases or other, um, um, uh, you know, encounters then that we should be talking about. Um, so this is coming from Godwin Kweku Nya coincide in Kwanta in Uti region. It says, good morning to you and your cherished uh, listeners. Those attempting to discredit Kwame Nkrumah so far, so far as our history is concerned, shall bear in mind or should bear in mind that Nkrumah remains the hero of Ghana and beyond. Um, Alex Akako in Ho says, good morning. I like the program. It's very educative. But we, the new generation, want to hear and know more about Kwame Nkrumah. Um, I think I have one more. Good morning. In fact, this is the first time I'm hearing of this man, Ria Koto. Uh, who, who is he and what is his impact on Ghana's economy? In fact, through my field of study, I've never heard of him. Well, the man is not Ria Akoto. The man is Bafor <laughs> Osei Akoto. Um, and he, he was um, a chief linguist for the Asantehene. Yeah. And this was what, in 1959, he and some others, some, some seven other people, ordinary Ghanaians, were arrested and detained uh, for actions that the, 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 the president at the time said were in breach of the security of the state. So, and, the, and the case is known as Ria Koto. Um, they went to the high court to try and appeal uh, and also their detention. Oh, no, they, it's about their habeas corpus, yes. which so, is their detention so, so, still. Yeah, so what they weren't called to do, maybe that perspective will be good for the discussion yeah. going forward. So now they've been arrested and detained mm -hmm. for that trial under the PDA. So they go to court, they apply for habeas corpus ad subsidiendu. Okay, so this and is... And what an is that for... So it's just an application to the court that they should be produced before court mm -hmm. for the, the public officer who is holding them to justify to the court why they, their detention should be continued. Okay. Okay, so that is why I'm saying that that justification, the court did not permit that. So the court really dealt with whether or not the order was regular and was, whether or not it was legal. And I'm saying that when you are doing this analysis... In constitutional interpretation, when the rights of people are involved, you don't go this mechanic, mechanistic way. Okay. okay. There's a broad analysis that you do. Okay. To okay. go into the matter. Somebody wants a bit of background to the PDA, why the PDA was passed. He says we cannot have the conversation. Fair enough. We cannot have the conversation without uh, discussing that. Yeah. And he asked a question. What makes the political trial of Chachuchi Kata different from Ria Koto? <laughs> In any way, was the PDA not made by a legislative body? Were we not here when the justices of the Supreme Court glorified and held to CI 99 so sacrosanct to the effect that even if justice was sacrificed on the altar of expedition, they didn't care because a law has been made by Parliament and the Judicial Committee. How come we are being selective in our discourse? In any way, the PDA qualified all the characteristics of rule of law uh, propped by A.V. Dicey. So, why the sweat? That's <laughs> J.J. J.C. Mensah. J.J., thank you for your contribution. We are doing our best not to be selective, and that's why we are exploring all the angles. So, yes. thank you for bringing this, this bit. Yes. So, lawyer, you want to touch on this? Yes, J.J. J.J. makes a, a very interesting <laughs> point. But that is where the discussion is. You know, when you study uh, theories about law, jurisprudence, mm -hmm. what the, show, the law should be, okay, we all want the best. So it's just not about going through the process, you see. So even look uh, under uh, Article 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 130 of the Constitution, the Supreme Court can annul uh, a law made by Parliament as being inconsistent with any provision of the Constitution. Okay, so that is the angle. That is the angle that the court, uh, Corsa and the other justices, 
Chief mm -hmm. Justice Corsa, mm -hmm. they had to do, okay? It's not a matter of looking at the document and saying this one is, 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 is unlawful or not. Look at the entirety of the provisions of the Constitution, as uh, J.B. Damkwade pointed to one of them, that at least Article 13.1 is direct, okay, okay, that you promised the people of Ghana that you are not going to do anything untoward against you know, the rights of the people. Okay, so is, is the PDA not inconsistent with that principle? Okay, so it's, it, you know, you can't just limit the discussion. And that is what we are not getting. When we are talking about a good law or a bad law, hmm. we are not talking about it going through the process to be law. In fact, that's why we say bad law. It is law, but we are saying it is bad. It's bad. We are not saying it is not law. A law should serve the good purposes of the people. The good of purpose of the people, the, the, the primary one, is your and right. Let me bring me, so then why pass PDA if it doesn't serve the purpose of the people? That's why I'm saying no, that the court if, was expected to have it invalidated it. the purpose it. of the people, who is saying it? Of course, the people. Exactly. <laughs> the people. Majority of the people. Ooh. If the law so serves... They went to court. They went to court. Mm -hmm. and, and now we are sitting here and saying that this is what the judges should have done. And we can all say this is what the judges should have done. In every case that goes to court, mm -hmm. this is what the judges should have done. But let's see what was held in, on the seat holding in the, in the ruling. Say, Article 13.1 of the Constitution imposes only a moral obligation upon the president of Ghana throughout the declaration, which is similar to the coronation oath of the Queen we of England. Just a pause. We, we have that slide, so I'll let the producer to project... Uh, the ruling. So four and five. We have it as four and five. So okay, right, let's six. project uh, four and five. Nick, carry on. Sorry for that. Yes. So, so you see the difficulty I have again, which is very fundamental. No, you were reading it. So before okay, my interruption, okay, so that you, okay. I don't. So, so let me let yes. me recap it so that yes. we get a flow. Article thirteen one, which they refer J B Dankwa has referred to, in in his um, refer to that on in his seat. Uh, 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 pleading his argument. He says, PDA 1958, by virtue of Article 13.1 of the Constitution, is contrary to the solemn declaration of the fundamental principles made by the president on assumption of office. But this is what was held in the ruling. Mm -hmm. The learned judges, three, Corsa, Van Le, and Akiwumi, they said Article 13.1 of the Constitution imposes only a moral obligation upon the president of Ghana throughout the declaration which is similar to the coronation oath of the Queen of England. The word should is used, not shall. The declaration does not constitute a bill of rights and does not create legal obligations enforceable in a court of law. So this is what the learned judges said. In, 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 in their ruling. That was what was held. So if, and you see, for me, what I keep saying is that they went to court, they had their day in court. I mean, heavy couples produced their body. I mean, whether they, they were presented in court in person or not, they had, they were represented by the Leonard J.B. Dankwa to, to, I mean, argue out their case. Mm -hmm. And the judges made their decision. If we, we sit to say that this is what they should have done, then everybody will find a reason to say in all ruling that this is what the judge should have done. Yeah, but if we don't review or if we don't assess what has happened in the past, how do we move forward? And you, you remember Ben Good. talked about, Benjamin talked about the developments, the legal developments that have happened since. A whole chapter five mm -hmm you know, was brought into it. So the question about the moral obligation will be answered. Beautiful. So yes, we have to look back in order to look forward in, 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 in learning and in developing our, our, our constitution. But there again, you ask that, have we learned what we're supposed to learn? And the proponents of this case, those trumpeting it, have they bring us those lessons? I mean, what have we seen? Okay. In certain rulings that people can also, I mean, deduce their own understanding and how the rulings have gone. 
Very well. Let me let me bring you in, Benjamin. Okay. I mean, I would have been happy. Sorry, I would have been happy if uh, we have the likes of Atokwashi and Co. Who are saying mm -hmm. that we were caught, we were thrown into prison, we were not represented in court, and therefore uh, 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 we have not been heard. I mean, what do we say? All the Atarim pattern. Here, the other side, we've not been heard, we are not represented, etc., etc. Then that would have been a very, a very passionate appeal that some people were held in detention, they should have been heard. Very well, Benjamin. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, with uh, due respect to uh, Senior Adi, you see, where, where we go, this, let me recap what I've said. This case has nothing to do with politics. This is the Ghana School of Law looking at the, 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 the law and how they can prepare. So we should separate the lecture from the uh, from Ria Kuto, the case. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so what I'm saying is that Ria Kuto as a person or the personalities involved here is not the significance of the celebration at all. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's lectures. But I said that the, the, the account by the son, uh, the honorable uh, minister, is just an aside. Okay, having the, the, the glory of maybe a, a child or the grandson alive and giving account of that. But the main focus is about the development of our constitutional law and human rights and all that. I've told you over the years how beneficial it has become. This is a platform where legal luminaries, our retired justices of the Supreme Court, have come. This discussion that we are having. It is not an individual who having selected this one as a case to, you know, um, uh, you know, hammer on some weaknesses. L go through our law reports, and you will see in several cases where the Supreme Court itself, subsequent Supreme Court, almost all, almost all the, the, the benches we have had, criticized in a very strong way how bad this case was decided. So it's not somebody, and in fact, to say that Everybody has the right to criticize the decision of the court. It's okay. when the matter is pending that subjudice you cannot. But when it is decided, you are free to discuss any part. But this one is selected by the Ghana School of Law as an institution training lawyers and drawing attention that this is a case that we can use as, as a, you know, a symbol, an illustration to discuss matters of our constitutional development, matters of human rights, and how we can move forward. Okay. So it's not on the personalities involved, because if you look at even real questions, seven others. Who the are se these seven others? Um, let me let my producer put up the seven others, uh, the personalities involved. Um, I think I also have that on my machine here. Yeah. We can look at who... I like the seventh one. The seventh yes. One. So... <laughs> so um, Francisca, I don't know if I can continue. Are you waiting for Please that? Please continue. Yes. So, or if um, you don't mind, let's just go through okay. who these were. So we have um, Bafo Osea Koto himself, the senior linguist of the Asante Hene, Peter Alex Danso, alias Kweku Danso, a lorry driver, Osei Esibe Mensa, a storekeeper, Nana Entri Buesi Akon, alias John Mensa, in Kofo Hene of Kumase, Joseph Kojo Entri Kusi, alias Anani Entri Kusi, Benjamin Kweku Owusu, producer manager. Uh, I don't know what that means, but Andrew Kojo Eduse, auctioneer and letter writer, and Halidu Kramo, a transport owner. So these were the persons involved. So maybe let it be on the screen for a for while. For a while. To, to justify <laughs> the diversity. Okay. So you see, in every case, if you have more parties involved, we use the first one to, to represent. The, 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 yeah, the entire is. group. Mm -hmm. Recently, I reviewed um, a matrimonial um, uh, cause judgment where even the, the woman in the thick of affairs is not used as the title of the name because she happened to be number two on the list. So we could have had <laughs> Hali Dukramu and seven others if Hali Dukramu was the first. Okay, so let's, this has nothing to do with politics. In fact, what we should be discussing is, well, if the name or just singling out one case will cause that confusion, why not just say uh, rule of law lectures? Mm -hmm. Okay, rule of law lectures. Then we pick some seminar cases from time to time and discuss them. To okay. me, to me, the 
Let me just uh, acknowledge um, Dr. Kumbo, um, one of the prominent law lecturers that we have in this country. She teaches um, law and development, and has said that law, law, is development in itself. Because without law forming the foundation of everything, you cannot even proceed with development. So the, the, the significance of it is the kind of laws that we make, I'm talking about lessons and not discussing personalities, the kind of laws I have said, Ria Koto is just a symptom of a bar law. So the significance is actually on the law. How parliament is assumed to be made up of reasonable men and women and who will do reasonable things, okay? And they do so not in their personal capacities, but in representative capacities. So everything that parliament does must be evaluated. And that is why the constitution itself, in terms of lawmaking, and in terms of even any other measure, subjecting it to the constitution, and they having the power of judicial review to determine the validity or the legality of everything we do. The people must be interested in lawmaking. How many of us are involved in how parliament makes laws? How many of us even know the procedure? Okay, there are avenues for individuals, Ghanaians to participate in lawmaking. Okay. Do we uh, uh, you know, take advantage of that? Because whatever comes up will affect us directly. Let's, can we quickly look at the, the, um, the lawyers involved and also the judges and whether or not that will be significant? So we'll display that on the screen. But um, what, so for the appellants was uh, Dr. Joseph Boache Dankwa exactly. or JB Dankwa. Yeah. And then the attorney general at the time, was it J. Bing? Bing, yes. Um, with him, A N E Emisa for the respondents. Okay. The, the judges were Corsa, Chief Justice Corsa, Van Lari, and Akiwumi. Mm. Akiwumi. Mm. Yes. yes. Three of them. Yes. And yes. anything to say about them? Yeah, for the uh, uh, justices of the Supreme Court, you know, um, uh, Chief Justice Corsa, the first, I think, Chief Justice uh, of Ghana. Uh, if I'm, I'm not wrong, uh, you know, very prominent, uh, has done a lot of things. Um, you mentioned Akiomi. I think later he even became the Speaker of Parliament at some point. Okay. Uh, that, that last one is Van Lee. Van Lee, you see very prominent cases there. But we're saying that we, 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 you know, you can do good things at some time, you know, at one time, but you can also, or many times, <laughs> but you can go off one time. And then, because we want the best for our country and for ourselves, we always look okay. at how best we can be. Even the discussion is not to attack their personalities. No, it's not to attack it them. Is no, no, not at all. Exactly. Quick, not quick, at all. Sorry, Benjamin, quick um, comment on the personalities involved. We mentioned mm. an, an, an eight or seven names. Yeah, seven names. Different kinds of people, lorry driver, transport. Uh, something producer manager yes quick comments from you yeah so that's good that 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 tells you and i gave you the nature again from i i, I repeat mentioning atokwashi because i mm -hmm. had a personal uh, uh, conversations with him and he told me how he ended up in prison and how he doesn't want to hear anything about Nkuma and all that and if you look at the nature of people and the things they do you see that these are people who hold conversation in the public square, as I said, transport okay. driver, they gather, and you know, all the, the, type, the typist, or as we refer to him. I mean, people bring their letters and they do, and these people have, have the power to influence other people by the okay. things they say. I mean, chief linguist, he goes around, talk everywhere, you know. But the point I, I want to make and to side with uh, 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 Senior Benjamin is that um, if the name of the lecture is changed, maybe that can change a whole lot of things. Okay. Because if you look at a person, uh, one, if you look at the name of the lecture, two, if you look at the persons involved, if you look at their political antecedents, if you look at their legal representation, JB Dankwa, I mean, everything tells you that. There's a political thing there. I don't know why we want to differentiate that this is, was a political, uh, 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 political what, game scoring or... Or, or what have you. Everything so you think there. that the, the political colorings yes. were intentional and they, they were not um, merely coincidental? They were intentional. They were not coincidental. But if we're saying that, let's pick the, the, the decisions of the court or the, the proceedings in court as a learning tool, 
then that is a good thing to go. Okay. But we cannot differentiate okay. the two. Uh, Gentlemen, at what point, has influenced it? Uh, yes. Francisca, but maybe a last question. If it was political, we have had other political uh, governments. Why haven't they changed it? Okay. Uh, no, that's, that would be a rhetorical <laughs> question. Um, at this point, we want to bring in um, a, a documentary. So we've been discussing the Ria Koto case. Okay, Ria Koto and seven others. Important to bring in this. So Ria Koto and seven others. Uh, we cannot mention all the names. But that's the case that we've been discussing. Um, this is on the back of the uh, Bafua Koto Memorial Lectures held in Kumase at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. We've been looking at, really... Um, the impact in terms of human rights and on rule of law and generally the constitutionalism of Ghana. Um, I want to read some messages. This is from Facebook. Solomon Telfa says, I believe you should look at the reason why the PDA law was passed. Because if you guys were around, we all saw so many attempts to kill in Kuma by such people. Um, another message from... Papa J. Papa J says Ria Koto didn't suffer this alone. So he's referring to Bafo Akoto. There is Ni Ama ex party Salifa. They all they only want to score some political points by organizing this lecture. Uh, Benjamin, I'll let you come in at some point with uh, the the bit of the background for the PD and also the lecture, the purpose for this lecture, and then the organizers. Um, I have an another message. What makes Ria Koto better than the Chachuchikata case? Ria Koto was just a nonconformist and a tribalist who was imprisoned based on an existing law. In any case, didn't the Supreme Court in the recent election petition uh, refer to C CI 99, which was also made by a body? Why didn't the Supreme Court also deviate from it for justice to be served? We cannot approbate and reprobate. We see Ria Koto to be the denial of human rights, but are we all okay when we talk about the Chachu Chikata case? A few more messages, uh, gentlemen, if you permit me. For me, I have grown to see evidence of Kwame Nkrumah. They should not mar the effort of Kwame Nkrumah. This is coming from Matthew... Ajuraku in Jasekan. Um, this is a very long one. Um, this is, okay, I'll read this one. This is short. I'll read this one. Anthony Bamora from Greta Estate says, I love this program. Thank you. Um, the organizers of Ria Koto and others are only bad losers of a case pouring out their sentiments. Okay. Another message here, if we are celebrating Akoto today on the back of a failed petition with the suggestion that the judges were wrong, then we might as well go back into all Supreme Court verdicts and celebrate everyone else. The whole lecture was an attempt to shade Nkrumah in an institution named after Kwame Nkrumah, and it is sad to notice how others are adversely trying to make Kwame Nkrumah irrelevant and create a certain picture about him. I don't even know the current impact of the Akoto case. This is from Francis Intema. Francis, forgive me, your message is really long, but I think I've read three quarters of it. Um, Ni Odoi Yemo from Ablekuma Central says, please, let's not forget that the passage of the bill was mentioned and indeed even discussed and rejected by Nkrumah in cabinet in 1957. It was only enacted into law in Parliament three weeks after the, the facts of the Amponsa and Apalu conspiracy became known to the government and supported by the special branch discovery of the secret oaths and plans of the direct action group of the Ga Shifimu. Thank you. To cause a complete Ga Shifimu to cause a complete breakdown of law and order. Um, let me take this message from Lil Gonzi in Ablekuma. He says, I'm asking lawyer why we have big six, but not in Kruma and five others. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure this is to avoid what we are doing or going through now. So I thought same could be done. I thought they could intentionally use Akoto I thought they intentionally used Akoto uh, because they were very wise and know what it would amount to now. Um, this is very interesting. 
Why did they use big sis, not Nkrumah and five others? L l let's take a break on this, and then we'll mull over it. When we come back, we'll continue. Um, Benjamin and Nia are already itching with their comments. So we'll be back right after this break. Stay with us on Inside Pages. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to Inside Pages. Our conversation has been on uh, the legal case, Re Akoto and seven others. And I want to bring back this um, message from Lil Gonzi that got my, my guests, you know, smiling and giggling a bit. He says, uh, I'm asking lawyer, why do we have big six, but not Nkrumah and five others? <laughs> on, on that score, um, let's, let's talk about um, the suggestion of the name change. Perhaps if the, the, the Ri Akoto or the uh, Akoto and seven others had been, the lecture, not, not the case per se, but the lecture had been given a different name, which would be perceived as more inclusive or cap uh, capturing all those other people involved. How feasible is that and would that have achieved much? Yes, uh, <clears throat> sorry. As I have indicated earlier that the, 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 the case is used as the, the foundation for our um, constitutional development. And when we talk about constitutional development, we're talking about rule of law. So I've suggested that if you could even adopt rule of law lectures, and then from time to time pick up certain seminar cases, you know, or developments even in uh, our time and discuss, and then even proffer some um, recommendations for the better management of our country, I think that that will be so good, okay? And that will also erase the kind of perception, the political dimension that has been given to the, the case. Mm -hmm. And as a, a, a law student, as a lawyer, and looking at this, I see it purely as a legal subject. Okay, so uh, my brother uh, said that why not have even uh, Nkrumah and Five Fathers and not <laughs> the big six? This, uh, I resist the temptation because this is not a legal matter, mm -hmm. it is a matter of politics and, um, uh, you know. A narrative that we want to have, but when you have politicians writing the history of the nation, that's what you have. How many people have had independent minded people have written about the history of Ghana? The writing of history should not be left to politicians. It's people and that's, and who, that's the question who yeah. should be writing our history? 
uh, uh, during one of the breaks, I was telling uh, me that um, for, for my generation growing up, history was, you know, and everything was in Kuma. Everything we learned about history, in Kuma this, in Kuma that, the entire history was riddled with his name and his achievements and whatnot. Um, a new a new tradition comes in, which will be the Dankwa, Buzia, Dombo, etc. Tradition comes in, and it's possible that they would feel that uh, theirs, their account of history was left out. And so they will also make an attempt, which may be reasonable, to bring in you know, their side of the story, their side of the historical story, their contributions to Ghana's history, uh, not just in Krumah. Maybe in doing so, it is in the how that some people have a difficulty that in, in doing so, we don't necessarily see in Krumah significantly in there. But is that justified? The one by um, Randolph and the rest. And if you look at uh, what uh, Nkrumah did with, uh, no, sorry, what Professor Dubain did with uh, F.K. Bua in the English book we read in Form 3, I mean, there's a whole lot of distortions, I mean, similar to what you've said. So you see that each time a political regime takes power, then there is a certain posture to push a certain agenda that. It is ours that should be seen. It is ours that we have to talk about and make the people know. Okay? But time and again, a lot of the things that have been said, you see that they are far from the truth. And I don't want to cite examples, but they are so clear. And talking about the constitutional development from Ria Koto, mm -hmm. again, I hold to that narrow and small view that the case was heard in court, the judges. Well, an aspect gave, of the case. Oh, everything. And that is factual. The factual point was that it was the 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 basis of your holding up. That was the discussion. Yeah. They did not go into whether or not there was a merit. That's why the court was saying that is it based on law? Well, is it valid on the face of it? So but I was looking at the, yeah. the, the again the seventh holding, which says that the effect of Article Twenty of the Constitution is that. Parliament is sovereign, and its legislative powers are qualified only with respect to the enactment of articles thereof. You see, so that's what we're saying, that everything that happened in Riyakoto was there. It was plainly, I mean, nothing new was manufactured. And we're talking about, I mean, what lessons we have learned. And we're saying that we've had a, presen a, a, a presidential election petition recently. Mm -hmm. And some have had their disagreements. By the end of the day, we are happily going about and saying that the judges have made their decision and the law is in their bosom. Therefore, we need to move on. That does not mean that we cannot discuss it. No matter how we discuss what happened, yet the decision was made. So no matter how we go back and reenact Akoto, redo, Akoto, redo, UP, redo, MPP, redo, <laughs> LMC, all those things, the biggest of the story would have been those who were put in prison and were never put before the court. Okay. Benjamin, for, for when I hear this, the conversations or the conversations and the counter uh, conversations about um, whether or not this person is changing the history, somebody also did it first, then I'm wondering, then what, should we even bother at all with history then? Because now history has become some, some kind of commodity uh, that everybody wants to you know, influence. So, uh, I, will, I, will, I will seek your indulgence to even divert a, a little before mm -hmm. I come there. You see, the, the, the point about the, the decision, the quality of decision in Ryakuto is born out of this. In the U.S., in the case of Marbury and Madison, which mm -hmm. is normally uh, likened, okay, the Supreme Court did not have express provision that they had the power to review an act of parliament. But they stood up to it that it is the province of the judiciary to, you know, do that legality test of act of parliament. I did not, uh, the, the 1960 constitution was skeletal. 
And so not much details were given, in fact, about even the, the, the sovereignty of parliament at the time. Okay. But be as a may. The expectation is that the, the judges the, at the Supreme Court in the Rea Koto case should have followed in the steps of uh, their colleagues uh, uh, in uh, Marbury uh, and uh, Madison. Exactly. Uh, looking at not doing judicial self-restraint, but being proactive, pragmatic, mm. you know, judicial uh, activism. But you given know, that the uh, legal inclination was more leaned towards the British, does that matter? It, it, it doesn't really matter because our legal system was quite different. You see, the UK system, even the political structure and ours and all that. Okay. But the whole point is that, yes, the, you, you heard uh, the uh, Corsa referring to the coronation oath of the Queen and yeah. all that. So definitely the mind would have been there. But are we saying that once a law is passed by Parliament, a sacrosanct is good? In 1964, the Constitution was amended and Ghana was made a one-party state. Is that sound? So Is that sound? No. So, no, I'm coming to the point yeah. of even the sovereignty okay. of parliament and we are if everything. To the close, so we because should be I've up. said that the quality of legislation is what we are talking about here. So, if the constitution could be amended and Ghana be to made make, a one party yeah. state, then what have we put in our constitution under Article 3? That in defense of the constitution, Ghana, there can't be any law that yeah. will make Ghana one party state. Okay. So there are a lot of things to see that this law was made, the constitution was made by which political administration? Some of the lessons which no, you No, so are, the political are. administration that gave birth to the constitution was the NDC, PNDC, yes. right? Yes. So why did PNDC or N, um, uh, administration put that provision there that Ghana shall be a multi-party democracy and not one-party state? Was it something good? So that is what we should be talking about. What have we learned? What can we do better? Because there are a lot of... The law is So, gentlemen, maybe one good. minute each on what we can do. Yes, the law is good as we, we have it. The, definitely, there are uh, some few areas that need improvement. Mm -hmm. But I think that the critical point has been enforcement and our institutions working okay. the, the, the constitution. Okay, me. I, I think that we have to enhance our legal education. And it has to be purely for the sake of education and the development of the country rather than put in a lot of political sentiments okay. because that will distract justice in many ways. Okay. Um, let's talk about today being 1st of May, Workers' Day. Let me read this uh, press statement from the NDC because we understand that um, at the forecourt of the TUC, the May Day celebration is happening. Um, so we'll have to wrap up here and then possibly join that celebration. But quickly, let me get the a uh, press statement from the NDC. This is the NDC message to workers of Ghana on May Day. On the occasion of May Day, the National Democratic Congress salutes all workers of Ghana. The NDC, as a social democratic party, solidarizes with the aspirations of the teeming workers of the country upon whose tireless labor the nation thrives. In the face of the abject hopelessness generated by the appalling incompetence of, Ikufa, of the Ecuador government, and compounded by the devastating onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic, the NDC urges workers to continue to commit themselves to their work and the nation in order to lubricate the wheels of progress and development. For it is their sweat and toil that stabilizes the nation even as the people of Ghana continue to endure the scandal-ridden Ikufuado government. We in the NDC are proud of our relationship with workers and we do hereby encourage them to stand tall in their unflinching loyalty to the cause of Ghana. The NDC further assures all workers that a future NDC government will commit to a much better handling of the economy and award them their due remuneration in recognition of their sterling role in lifting high the flag of Ghana. This is a non-negotiable assurance that we owe to workers in order to maintain their faith in the choice they have made to serve this nation for both the present and the future generations, for their uncountable contributions to Ghana, their commitment and dedication to duty, for their love and for uh, their, their, and their loyalty to Ghana, we hail all workers of Ghana. Um, this is signed by Johnson Asiedun Ketia, the General Secretary of the NDC. Um, right now, though, 
uh, we will cross over to the forecourt of the TUC in Accra, where the May Day celebration is taking place. We understand President Ekufuado will, it will be present and will deliver a speech. But uh, from me and my guests, uh, Benjamin Antiadu and Niyama Adi, gentlemen, thanks by the way. We want to say happy May Day to all workers in Ghana. I'm Francisca Kakwa-Forsen. Have a good morning.